Dublin Castle. A national forum on Europe is taking place here. The Irish government set it up after a big failure. The Nice Treaty referendum no result in 2001. Since then, the forum, supported by Brussels, has been aimed at fostering national debate on European questions. The referendum on the Treaty of Lisbon, foreseen for next summer, is building up steam. According to pundits, this country of almost four and a quarter million people will probably be the only one of the European Union's 27 member states to put the treaty to a referendum. The campaign has not yet begun, but the voices in favour and against the text are warming up to try and convince the voters. This uh, treaty is the same thing essentially as the European Union Constitution which the people of France and the people of Holland rejected in 2005 and the people of Britain and the people of Denmark and the people of che the Czech Republic and the people of Poland want referendums on it. But their politicians, their prime ministers and presidents have agreed that Chancellor Angela Merkel not to have a referendum on any account. So it's the politicians and the elites against the people and I hope that the Irish people will not allow themselves to be used as a rubber stamp for this the travesty of democracy. Academic Anthony Coughlin helped to defeat the Nice Treaty in the first Irish referendum on it. A second referendum having given it a yes, he's not keen on sitting in on the forum. In 1985 the Supreme Court decided that parliamentary ratification of important matters wasn't sufficiently democratic and that's why the people have a direct say in their European future. Coughlin was the driving force behind that case. European Affairs Minister Dick Roach has crossed words with Coughlin on more than one occasion. You will see a very vigorous campaign here. I would have to say, I would witness campaigns in other member states, uh, and even our Nice One campaign, which was not a good campaign, would have left any of them standing. The Green Party has stood against all the European treaties. This year, however, it's part of the governing coalition. The party chief is the Minister of the Environment. John Gormley wants to change the party's position. That will mean having to convince at least two-thirds of the 2,000 members. When the treaty was put to a vote at a convention last January, it was clear that Ireland's military neutrality was on their minds. There continue to be concerns, obviously, in relation to uh, militarisation, but I think the fact is that uh, Ireland can continue to play a constructive role under the uh, UN banner, and that's very important for people uh, in this country. Uh, and, of course, there's a whole question then that has been brought up in, in relation to the so-called neoliberal uh, direction of, of Europe. Politically, there are several definitions of neutrality. European common defence plays a part in the uncertainty. Ireland has been neutral since 1922. Mary Lou Macdonald is a member of the European Parliament representing the Sinn Féin party in the opposition in Dublin. The fundamental question is ongoing rolling integration in the best interests of the peoples of Europe. Is it what the people of Europe want? Is it what can deliver, not just for the political elites and for the very powerful, but for citizens on the ground? That's the first question that should have been asked, and sadly, it hasn't been asked. The treaty naysayers also raised the question of guarantees for their country's tax policy. Low corporate tax has proved a manner for the Irish, attracting foreign investment more than anywhere else in the EU. Yet the pro-treaty camp argues the new document doesn't threaten the 12.5% at all. We've had this nonsense from Sinn Féin of all people about our neutrality. It is a bit smile-making uh, that a party with its recent history should be so focused on militarism. Reality of this is Ireland's neutrality is protected in treaties as in this treaty. Our taxation position is protected. The opposition wants to avoid confusion as much as anyone, says the Labour Party's Joe Costello. At the present time, the government is extremely unpopular. So we don't want, we want to try and make sure that the Irish people do distinguish between voting for the treaty and voting against the government. Most of the country's parties are expected to come out in favour of the new EU treaty, but analysts like former opposition leader Alan Dukes warn against second-guessing the public. I, I think we couldn't take it that it's a foregone conclusion that people would vote yes in a referendum in Ireland. Um, we, we saw that before with the Nice Treaty. The biggest danger, I think, is complacency. 
uh, that the people who are in favour of this would feel that they don't have to campaign. Um, my reading of the mood is such that I'd be doubtful about the prospects of this referendum passing unless there's a very active uh, and well-informed public debate. The government intends to spend some five or six million euros on its campaign. The National Forum will play a central role. 42 organisations are taking part with six political parties. They meet twice a week. The Forum's chairman, Maurice Hayes, says no effort will be spared to liven up the debate. What we will do, as we did with the, the previous treaties, is uh, try to identify uh, the main points at issue and uh, uh, help people to get information about those by having meetings around the country, uh, by having uh, uh, advertising campaigns, by having uh, important speakers from, from Europe. Immigration policy is not sure to count much in this campaign, but it could influence the result. In the past few years, Ireland has seen more than 150,000 immigrants, mostly from Poland. This followed Dublin's decision in 2004 not to limit new EU members' nationals coming in. A million more are expected in the next decade. Irish citizens are of mixed minds about this. The other, other countries coming over here, yeah. Um, I would have been for it at the time. Now I'm not too sure because I don't know if it's so good for the economy anymore. Europe hasn't done anything for Ireland, really. Well, I don't know. We'll have to hear the in-depth discussion yeah. on it to make up our minds. Exactly. Everybody's like that. Yeah. A referendum seems to me to be a very, very efficient way of asking people their opinion on one very specific issue to which there is a clear yes or no answer. Um, if you put before them a document, uh, like for example our own constitution that has a whole series of articles in it, some of which people will like and some of which they won't like, some of which they'll agree with and some of which they won't, uh, it makes the choice much more difficult and you'd wonder whether a referendum is really an appropriate way of deciding on these things. Ireland's summer 2008 referendum on the Treaty of Lisbon will be closely scrutinised in detail throughout the EU and in the European Parliament in particular. The result cannot fail to have an influence in another democratic watershed, the 2009 European elections.